firstly, one thing that uh, comes up in the for-purpose sector that you really don't have in the for-profit sector is this sort of existential question of what is our purpose? And a number of my strategy-related uh, clients, that, that question's been front and centre right from the beginning of the work, where we're working with the, the senior management team and with the board, and there's this real question of, well, why do we exist? What are we trying to achieve? The ex sort of existential question, which sort of then leads into all the things, the activities that we are doing, um, are they coherent? And, and again, how do they align with the purpose, assuming we've worked that out? And um, so that makes it, firstly, uh, super interesting, and I think it's a really important question. Many organisations um, sort of have this inertia about, well, we exist because we've always existed. And in fact, the board almost brings a, a, a position of, let's focus on um, continuing the organisation. Our, our, our role here as board members, it's not about driving performance and better outcomes for beneficiaries, it's almost more around let's protect the organisation and ensure it continues to exist into the future. And I think if we're going to get improved performance, we need to make that a much sharper conversation at the board level and, and the senior management level, holding ourselves to account for driving to better outcomes for clients, um, because fundamentally that's why they all exist for their end beneficiaries. And then the second would be the interesting role that other players in the ecosystem have. In the corporate world, those players are, you know, in most cases, competitors. Um, in the not-for-profit world, it looks different in a good way. Um, the broader ecosystem and being clear about your role versus other players is really critical um, to avoid duplication of services, fragmentation, confusion of clients. And so sometimes a competitor could actually be a collaborator or a partner or someone who could deliver a service better than you can. Uh, I think the other key difference is taking a strategy uh, and linking it to a clear articulation of the outcomes that you want to achieve for the area, the cohort, the issue you're trying to, trying to respond to. And the way we like to articulate outcomes is you know, through a theory of change, understanding not only the activities, but then what impact those activities have over time uh, on the people you're, you're trying to help. And that time frame is also quite different in the not-for-profit sector. It's a longer time frame. It, it forces us to think about the long term. It takes us away from sort of an annual cycle and focusing on, on annual numbers. Uh, so I think embedding outcomes into your strategy is, is essential. Good strategy, in my view, comes when not only the staff, but key stakeholders are involved in the thinking behind the strategy. So you get alignment um, between the organisation's purpose its board, its management, and the staff who are there. And quite often staff who are in not-for-profits or for-purpose organisations go to work there because they're passionate about that purpose. And so being involved in the development of that strategy is critical to uh, being able to achieve it in the, both the shorter term but also the longer term. And it also needs um, what I would call cascading strategies. So unless you're a very small organization, you need not only a strategy, an overarching strategy and vision for the organization, but you need a series of implementation strategies or operational strategies for different divisions in the organization so that they all align with the overall strategy. Um, and so that everyone's pulling in the same direction and is able to report back on how they're contributing to the intended outcome and the intended impact. Um, and those cascading strategies, that kind of operational planning, which many people consider quite mundane and boring, and I think is very exciting and interesting, uh, is what makes it work. Because without those, strategy is just um, a lot of fancy words, um, pretty pictures in a document. What makes it interesting is the way in which you bring people together around your operational plans, um, around your different divisional plans. Um, and the way in which you help people become excited about their role in the bigger strategy and the little bit that they can contribute to the organization's impact. I think the other point is that um, I think strategy should be seen as a kind of evolving, flexible tool to help guide your impact as opposed to, a, right, we've got a five-year strategy, how can you be sure you're doing it? 
because I think especially in the social sector there's an importance of being agile and whilst it's great that you've got a five-year strategy to guide your thinking there's always going to be stuff that's happening like big major policy changes that might just disrupt if you think about the NDIS huge disruptor in every single disability service organisation who thought they had a 10-year strategy and then the NDIS came into play probably went bollocks we have to start again because there's been this massive disruption. In my experience, good strategy actually understands implementation. So the more you're able to look into and deeply understand how an organisation functions, the real needs of the people it seeks to serve, um, in our world we often call them end beneficiaries, but at the end of the day they're people, and trying to understand their life circumstances, their needs, and what's required to actually make things change for them. But more importantly, understanding how an organisation actually functions. So you can design really good strategy to be able to achieve what you think will be the impact that's required but if it doesn't understand the actual workings of the organisation, the challenges of day to day within that organisation, then the strategy is going to end up on the shelf.